Hello everyone and welcome to Sinful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe and most of all I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. So it's almost tournament time for me and I've just finished painting up an army. Not the one you see on screen here, I haven't put that picture up yet. But you may go and find that one on Instagram and Twitter and all that sort of stuff or even on Facebook. However, I've just finished painting up an army and I thought I'd share some tips and some ideas for getting an army painted quickly and efficiently to a at least battle ready standard. I understand that some people really struggle to paint their armies and really struggle to get the motivation more than anything to paint their armies and for me events are a fantastic way to get me painting an army over the line. That or deadlines thrown at me by members of the community. Um, generally when you're challenging your friends to do painting things you sort of work together and sort of compete is another good way but tournaments are definitely my big driver even though i'm a very much a narrative minded gamer tournaments require your army to be painted for the most part so i want to get my stuff painted um, even at tournaments that don't require me to have an army painted generally they require you to have an army painted to get extra points so i wanted to get all those points so anyway what we're going to talk about today, as I mentioned, tips for getting an army painted quickly and efficiently. So let's get cracking on to this. Hopefully this can be helpful in getting you to get your army painted and over the line. So I guess my first tip for you is work with a simple scheme. So what you can do here is you can pick out a scheme that has minimal colours in it meaning that you're going to be able to get large amounts of your models done with relative ease. This also means on a lot of models as well, you'll be able to dry brush on the colors to really help speed up that process of getting a lot of color. There are some tips and tricks you can do when dry brushing to help with a lot of things that might otherwise not look as good with dry brushing, like the potential of using your brush to move around in round motions, which can really help pick out muscle definition and cloth and all that sort of stuff as well, and buff armor. Um, otherwise, you know, with hard edges like fur, dry brushing is fantastic for that as well. So a scheme not only, I guess, is the actual colours themselves, but the actual models themselves. This is something you should definitely think about if you're trying to knock out an army fast. You don't want to pick an army of highly detailed models if you're trying to get this army done fast um, and get it ready. But if you are picking a more highly detailed army, then it's definitely something to pick a simple scheme, not use a lot of colours and maybe use a lot of the... I guess bedangle colors so the things where you have gems do them all the same color where you have different guns uh, or weapons do them all the same color um, and this sort of thing across your army if you have hair colors as well do them across the same army as one as well all of this can really help you with making that simple scheme work regardless of what you are painting my next suggestion, once you've sort of picked out that scheme and picked out the army that you're going to be doing and painting up this force in this, uh, I guess, shorter period of time, is do a test model before you get started. Your test model should be a model that's got all the parts and bits and pieces of different colours that you've got. So if you've definitely got cavalry in your army, I strongly suggest your test model being a cavalry model. Um, you probably don't want to do like a test model like the picture I've got up where this is probably like got a bit too much and is probably going to be a centerpiece for your army but you definitely want a model that's got all the elements of your army on it at least in some degree so you can test out all the colors you want to put onto it and the scheme works on a larger um, on everything in your army test models are important definitely do one as it will allow you to see how your scheme looks and make decisions whether you're not to change up your color choices or whatever you're doing on the scheme itself before you actually put it onto multiple models and have to redo a ton of models. Now, something I really recommend for doing when you're trying to paint up large projects is something called batch painting. And what batch painting is, is when you grab a bunch of models that are very similar and paint them up in a lot, in sort of a production line format. You would have, say, as you've got here, you can see all these Caradron Overlords Arcanauts at the front here. You've got 20 of them. You would start painting the skin on one and you do the base coat for the skin on all of them, and you do the base coat for the metal on all of them, you do the base coat for the cloth on all of them, and you go through and do all these processes. By the time you've finished your first model, the, I'm sorry, by the time you've finished your last model, the first one will be finished. So you can just keep doing this batch painting and work your way through large blocks of models in pretty decent order. One thing with batch painting to recommend is get your largest blocks out the way first. This is also, I guess, a bit of a, a mental sort of trick you can play on yourself because if you've got these large blocks of troops out the way first, you see more of your army done. 
batch painting can be boring at times so there are things you need to do and we'll discuss them later in the video on how you can help break up this time and keep yourself motivated while painting now as mentioned batch painting can be a little bit of an arduous sort of task so you're going to want to break up your batches with something on the side this means just having another model that you're working on to the side of your batch of large amount of models just something you can i guess focus on a single model do bits and pieces and really get some progress going while you're doing the batch you can have this as a character model or maybe a war machine or a much smaller unit of say a couple of models you know, like a three-man unit of castigators if you're painting up a large blob of Stormcast Eternals on the main part of your army, for instance. But really, this is just something that will help you keep motivated. You can see the progress on your little model, and you can also, I guess, see how some colors work on your character models alongside your troops and really sort of start to mix the two and make sure the two are matching properly when you're doing your paint scheme. Now, something that will really help you move through the army and keep motivated is paint with some friends. Now, I know in this current world, it's really hard to really get with a lot of people to paint, but there are great online sources you can use, like Discord, which we have a link to our own Discord server you can come paint with your friends in, um, down below in the description of the video. But Discord, uh, even Skype or Facebook Messenger, any of those are fantastic ways for just connecting with your friends, even if you're not allowed or can't meet up with them in physical form now the other alternative as well if that's something really hard to sort of organize is maybe watch something or listen to something while you're painting whether it's a podcast or maybe um, an audio book or a youtube video a twitch streamer or something that background noise will make you feel like you're in a room with stuff happening um, it can really give you that feel of being back in the hobby shop in your games workshop store or wherever you do your hobby when you've got your friends around and you can't maybe have them around with you at this moment. For me, there's a ton of things I like to do. I like to go watch other YouTube content creators or Twitch streamers that do Warhammer. I like to listen to a good audio book, but for me, I actually find watching stuff is my preferred way of having something to do while I'm painting. For me, it also reminds me to look up every now and again, stop hunching forward on my painting desk and just look up, stretch, watch a little bit, go back to my painting it keeps me fresh it keeps me motivated and it means i don't feel like utter terribleness when i finally you know after two hours stand straight back up and every bone in my back and shoulders and neck cracks with agony an important thing to do while you're trying to get this project done for whatever time frame you're trying to do it in is make time every night and whether that is 10 minutes 20 minutes half an hour two hours three hours or six hours whatever it's make that time every night available to get a little bit of hobby done a good trick i use for myself is get paint on your brush every night because when that paint once that paint is on your brush you might as well put it on a model so it's not just sitting down at your desk or picking up a model that you've got to do it's as soon as you've got paint on that brush something is going to happen and whether it's one model getting its cloak painted that doesn't matter it's progress that night and some nights you really won't feel like it so go sit down put a wash on something put a minimal amount of color onto a character and you might find you feel better um, having put that color on you might do a couple more colors or you might find that uh, doing a bit of your batch painting you might find oh well it's, I've already done three I might as well continue on to do five and then at that point you might go well I might continue on to do ten and it's just making that time every night available. Now, I understand people have things that they do in their lives besides that. I mean, I have my wife, my children, and my other activities that I do as well, mostly making YouTube content, but I have to sort of divvy that up with the ability to paint as well. So it's a matter of some nights, maybe I don't get to paint, but it's making that time up on other nights. And there'll generally be nights of the week where I try and do a bit more painting. So if I've missed out on other painting during the week, then I've got time to make up for that on that night. Now, this is something I do to really help me get through painting a large lot of models in an art, so an army. And it's split up your project into smaller projects. Now, what I mean by this is picking up armies and maybe you're painting a 2000 point army for a tournament that's coming up. Um, split that up into 500 point blocks or roughly 500 point blocks and paint up those 500 point blocks one at a time now what you can do with this is i've got a picture up here of an auric war clans army maybe it's that you paint up the mega boss he's one project on his own and you don't do anything else until that mega boss or more crusher there is done and maybe another project here is getting all your 
Ard Boys batch painted and maybe you've got your War Chanter and Brutes sitting on the side of some alternate projects. And maybe your other project is getting all your cavalry painted because they're all roughly going to be the same with the boars. And then your other last project is getting all the Savage Oryx painted with the Wurgog Prophet on the side of them. All of this is stuff you can really do and quite easily, I guess. And splitting that project up into smaller projects will help you see progress. Because there's nothing worse when you're batch painting than having like 90% of your army 50% done. It looks like you've done nothing. What you want to do is you want to have some finished models on the table and you want to be continuously adding to that pile of finished models because that gives you the motivation to continue painting on with the rest of your force. Now imagine this, if all those Savage Oryx weren't painted but all the Iron Jaws were, um, it looks like you're halfway there. But if everything here was only done on base colors and a wash would it look anywhere near as good so it's definitely worth finishing bits and pieces and units and smaller projects one at a time rather than trying to attempt the whole force at once because you'll just become overwhelmed and you feel like you're getting nowhere and well i think this is the most important tip you're going to get in the whole video and that's enjoy yourself like i've mentioned in like trying to make time for every night to do a little bit of painting or pick an army that you can do minimal color schemes that's easy to paint the most important thing here is you enjoy yourself if you've got an army that you really love the look of and you're really loving even if it's the most detailed and difficult army to paint if you are enjoying yourself doing it you'll breeze through the army in no time at all same as if you've managed to get bits and pieces done you're um, not painting when you're tired you're painting when you're motivated and wanting to get it done you will enjoy yourself more and it's important to make sure it's enjoyable you don't want painting and this part of the hobby to feel like a slog it can at times and there's no doubt it can however there are things you can do and some of the things i've tried to mention in the video that you can do to help alleviate any sort of unwanted feelings of not enjoying yourself so definitely make sure what you're doing is enjoyable that is the most important thing you can do and the last bit of information I, and tips I want to give you is next time, challenge yourself more. Now that you've got your way through that first army, it's time to paint another one because that's how this works. Once you're in the rabbit hole, it just keeps on getting worse and worse and you keep on getting more and more grey plastic. Believe me, I know. Now, after your first army, you've got that army painted. Maybe challenge yourself to do something you didn't do on the first army or challenge yourself to learn in your skill on your next army. Whether that be just something as simple as I want to put more highlights on my troops or I want to do an army where I'm not using washes and I want to shade just using actual paint or I want to try non-metallic metal on a character or I want to try a glowing effect so uh, real lighting effects on models and stuff like that. All of that stuff is stuff you can challenge yourself on your next army or even going back to the army you've just finished and touching up some of the models you've already just done. Challenging yourself helps you to grow and continue to learn new skills and makes painting easier in every aspect as you continue to go. Well, that's it for today. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and also drop a comment down below on things you found that have helped you get your armies painted in a timely manner. All that stuff will be useful to anyone looking at this video. Next, if you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our community, you can do so by following the link to our Discord server in the description of the video below. And next, while you're on YouTube, please do go check out my featured channel section. There's a bunch of other fantastic Warhammer Age of Sigmar content creators in there that do everything from battle reports, painting tutorials, tactical videos, and more besides. Lastly, though, we'd like to give a shout-out to everyone who supports the channel via Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you to James, AJC, JC, Christian Weir, Philip Ward, Soren, Kenny Lowell, Alaron Shot First, Chaos Spawn, James Crowder, and Andrew Jarvis. Thank you all so much for your support. If you'd like to help support the channel like these people do, you can do so by following one of the links to YouTube members or Patreon in the description of the video. That's it for today, folks, though. Thank you all for watching the video. Stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the grey. Ciao for now.